In this sponsored tutorial, I'm going to show you to create animated backgrounds just like Apple would. If we scroll down this page right here, we see this background, this color explosion, and the text overlay here. If I scroll backwards, the text explosion goes backwards. You probably recognize this kind of feature, this kind of functionality from the Apple website. It is super cool. It is only animating as I scroll. The faster I scroll, the faster it goes. The slower I scroll, the slower it goes. It goes forwards and backwards. And you can have any kind of overlay that you want. And I'm going to show you how to do all of this in this tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I try to answer them the best I can. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. And if you haven't done so yet, click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. Now let's get started. This is the scroll sequence website. As you can see, they have an animation right up front and center in the header. I have some more examples right here. And in this video, you're going to see how to build examples like these. And you're going to see a lot of examples. And the scroll sequence plugin has a free version and a paid version. The pricing is down here. The free version is very capable. You get a free trial for 14 days, which gives you the full pro version for 14 days. But then once that expires, you're still able to use up to three scenes which you'll see what that means in this tutorial. You can still have up to three scenes on your site and you'll find out what that means in this tutorial. And you can use up to 100 images per scene, which is a significant amount as you'll see in this video as well. We are going to use the pro version in this video. Once you buy the pro version, you download it to your hard drive then you go into your website, you go to plugins and then add new. Then you click on upload plugin. Then you click on choose file, find the file on your hard drive, Click on open and then click on install now. Then click on activate plugin. Then since we have the pro version, I'll click on activate license key. If you don't have the license key, just click on activate free version. And now we have it installed. And if you do get the free version, you get the 14 day free trial as you know. So everything you see in this video will work exactly as I showed in this video because you have the free trial of the pro version. And I'll also show you what it means when you go back to the free version. They can decide whether you need the pro or if the free would work just fine for you. So the first place you want to go now this is installed is add new scroll sequence. In here is where you add your new scroll sequence. I'm going to name the scroll sequence so you think you can dance. And we're going to click on add scene. This is where we add the actual images that create what looks like a video. So what we have to do is find a video. We have to get still frames of that video. Then we upload those still frames under our image sequence right here. And for the free version of the plugin, you can have up to three scenes. If I keep pushing plus, we keep adding scenes. And as you scroll down the page, you'll see scene zero, followed by scene one, and then scene two. And those play like videos when you're scrolling. And when you scroll backwards, they play in reverse. And if you stop, they stop moving. So it's like an interactive video, and it's actually just still frames of a video. So we're going to first find a video. We're going to use Envato Elements, which is my go-to stock footage place right now. You can use Pexels.com, Pixabay.com, any royalty-free stock footage or some kind of stock footage subscription you have access to or your very own videos. So inside of Envato, I found this guy right here. He likes to dance and dance pretty crazy. I think this would be entertaining to have when you're scrolling, he's dancing one way, you scroll back up, he dances the other way. It'd be pretty entertaining. And it is below... 100 megabytes. The software we're going to use to create the still frames has a limit of 100 megabytes. So if you download videos that are bigger than that, you're going to have to compress them somehow and then use the software I'm going to show you in just a minute or just find videos that are less than 100 megabytes. So I'll click on download to download this video and then I'll go to easygif.com video to JPEG. So when you come to the site Easy GIF, just click on Video to GIF, and then under the sub menu here, go to Video to JPEG. And here, we choose our file, which is the video we just downloaded onto our computer. And then once that's here, we then click on Upload Video. You can also paste the URL of a publicly accessible video, like a YouTube video, or a public Vimeo or Wistia video. And then once you push Upload, it's gonna upload that video and then after it's uploaded, we're going to have some options to process the video into still images. Now our video is here. We can push play and we can watch it if we want to. And if it's a longer video, like I said, it's going to be less than 100 megabytes, which is their limitation on this website here. If you find a different one, it might have a higher limit, so you can use that. But if you have a longer video and you just want a portion of it, you can move 
the scrubber here to wherever the portion is that you want to start creating the, 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 the screenshots. And then you just click on use current position. And this is where it's going to start taking still frames. And then you go to where you want the video to stop taking still frames. Click on use current position for the end time. And I'll just take the still frames between these two sections. So that's one way you can do it. Or you can get still frames for the entire video as long as the video is less than 10 seconds. Because down here, for the size, we want to choose up to 1200 pixels. And for the frame rate, we want to choose 20, which means we can have a max of 10 seconds of video. And this gives us the most frames per second, which is going to give us the smoothest looking scroll sequence on our website. And we want it to be as smooth as possible. So I'm going to choose the entire 10 seconds. For start time, I'm going to have zero. For end time, I'm going to put 10. And then I'm going to choose convert to JPEG. Now, if we scroll down, we see a little kitty cat here. And in a few minutes, all of our images are going to appear right here. We can choose which ones to download or just download all of them in a zip file. And there we are already. So as we scroll down, we see lots of still frames. Sometimes it looks like he's barely moving in the frames, but you can see that he actually is. So we have lots of still frames. Then we click on download frames as zip. This is going to download them all to our hard drive. And then we just double click the zip file or unarchive it however you have to on your computer. And we see all the frames right here. And there are 100 frames. And that's good enough for what we're going to do today. And that's also the limit for the free one. So you're going to see how well you can do with just 100 frames. And these file names are always going to be the same no matter which video you upload to Easy GIF. So if you're creating multiple scroll sequences on your website, you might want to come in here and rename all of these to be more descriptive because you're going to have your media library full of these images that all have the same file names. And it's going to be an absolute mess. So it is a bit of work. Although if you have a Mac, you can use something like Mac Automator to rename these really quickly and easily. There's software like that for Windows as well, but I don't know what it's called. Anyhow, we need to take all these images and we need to upload these to our scroll sequence right over here. Let's click on Select Attachments. I'm just going to drag and drop and upload all these guys. Now that all 100 images are uploaded, we can click on Use Attachments. And that adds them all to our image sequence right down here. And the numbers that are overlaid are the actual frame that is that image. So this is frame 0, frame 1, frame 2, frame 3, frame 4, frame 5, frame 96, 97, 98. So we have them all here. And we can also just click on the X to delete frames if we want to. To get those back, we have to go back to Select Attachments, select those specific images again, and then have them added again. You don't want to remove frames in the center. If I were to remove frame 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, there'll be a giant gap and a skip in the video. So make sure you remove frames at the beginning or at the end. And if you're finding this tutorial helpful, click the like button because that helps this video show up for more people on YouTube so we can spread the knowledge and help more people with this information. So make sure you click like if you like this video. And next we have to customize the text that's overlaid. Simply highlight the text and add your new text so you think you can dance. And this will be overlaid over top of the scroll sequence, which you'll see in just a minute. Text on the top right, because we do have to mess around a little bit, just a little bit in the HTML. This title here is an H1 and it has an ID of on earth. We want to change this to something like heading one. I want to copy this to make sure we have this in our clipboard. Because when we're making animations, we have to specify the ID that the animation is being applied to. If we scroll down, we see the add animation button here. So let's click on that. And let's type in here hashtag for an ID and then heading one. If this was a class, if this said class right here instead of heading, which also works in this plugin, we'd have to put a dot here instead of a hashtag. But it's going to be an ID for our example here, because that's what it is by default. I don't need you changing too much of the HTML, just the least amount necessary, which is adding a name for the ID. And this name has to be unique. So when we add more scroll sequences to the page or more headings to the page, we have to have a unique ID for every single one. And in the fields to the right, we add a start and an end. This is where the heading is going to appear. So I'm going to have it appear on frame 15 and then disappear again on frame 80. And I'm going to add a from animation. 
this is going to have the heading appear from something else. So in fade from opacity, it's gonna fade from zero. The opacity here is set to zero. We can set it to something else if we want, but I'm gonna set it to zero. And now when the animation starts, it's gonna be zero opacity. That's gonna fade up to an opacity of one, which is opaque. The duration I'm gonna to set to 15. This is how many frames this change in opacity is gonna happen over. We're gonna have a two animation, which is when the text exits the screen. So I'm gonna have a scale two, and I'm gonna to scale to big, so that it's gonna grow, and also it's gonna fade. It's gonna fade down to zero. And this is also gonna take 15 frames. And then down below here, our image duration in pixels, I'm gonna change this to 10. This means that every 10 pixels you scroll, a new image is shown. The larger this number, the more jumpy your animation is going to be. These options down here we're going to leave alone for now. We are going to go back up and publish and see what we have so far. So here's our scroll sequence. We can see it's not moving. As I start to scroll, he starts to dance. Now we see our headline coming in. Keep on scrolling. The faster you scroll, the faster he dances. You scroll backwards, he dances backwards. And the headline also goes away again once we get to where we have it fading in, which is frame 15. And then it grows and fades out. And then our scroll sequence is done. So that's how easy it is to make a scroll sequence. We can also customize the appearance of this text, but we have to use some CSS for that. If we go back into our scroll sequence editor here, we have a CSS box right here to edit or to customize, we get the selector, which is pound or hashtag header one, open curly bracket, close curly bracket. Don't be intimidated. CSS is actually pretty easy because all the commands are in plain English. And so they describe what you're doing. So I'm gonna change the font size to 60 pixels. And I'm gonna change the color to white. All you really have to learn is where to put the curly brackets where to put the ID or the class, and what these commands are. And Google has an unlimited amount of information about this, and I even have a different channel on YouTube specific to HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And you can get to that in the card above or the description down below. I haven't published that channel in a while, but I'm working on a 50 video set to show you how to build a website from scratch using only HTML and CSS. If you like that kind of thing, make sure you check out that channel. So with that CSS code now in there, let's go back up here and click on update and then scroll to the top and click on refresh. And now when we scroll, we see our text is now white instead of black. You can make this any color you want. You can make it any size you want. You can do a lot, a lot of things with CSS. In fact, all the fancy functions you see in page builders, not all of them, but the vast majority of fancy functions in page builders are done through CSS. And now this scroll sequence, I would say, is done. And we can now add this to where we want it. Usually you don't want to have a scroll sequence just on a page on its own. Sometimes maybe you do. But I'm going to show you how to add it to an Elementor page. To do that, what we need is the short code for this specific scroll sequence. So go to scroll sequence and then scroll sequence again. And you'll see a list of all your scroll sequences, currently only one. Let's copy the short code. Let's go to pages and add new. And I call this page scroll sequence and then save draft. Then I'll click on edit with Elementor. I'm gonna look up the short code widget. The short code widget is in the free version of Elementor. So you don't need the pro version. Paste in our short code right over here. And we see that the space is taken up, but sometimes it doesn't appear right away. So I'm gonna click on publish and then I'm gonna refresh this page, refresh the editor page. And now our scroll sequence appears. If I scroll down, we see it scroll sequencing just as it would on the front end. So if we preview this page, what often happens with Elementor is it doesn't go full width. Even if you come back in here and you make all your settings full width instead of boxed, you do everything how you're supposed to, and you come back out here and see the new preview, it's still not full width. There's still this gap on the left and on the right. There's always going to be a little bit of a gap on the top and the bottom, but we can get rid of the gap on the left and the right by going back to our scroll sequence. Let's just go back to our dashboard and then scroll sequence, scroll sequence, edit the scroll sequence we created, come back down here and 
change image width to force full width. And I click on update. Now refresh our Elementor page and we'll see that this white strip on the left and on the right will be gone. It's full width. If we create a second scroll sequence under scroll sequence and add new and then add that right after this one, there's going to be a white gap. That's really hard to get rid of. But if you add a second scene instead of a second scroll sequence, then there is no gap. But there is a limit to how many scenes you can do in the free version. I don't believe there's a limit to how many scroll sequences you can do, just how many scenes. So if you add scenes to your scroll sequence, you can actually have this guy dancing. And then as soon as this guy's done, we have the next scroll sequence happening. Whereas if you have multiple scroll sequences, there's a little gap between them in the form of whatever the background color is right here. So I'm now going to pause this video. I'm going to make a bunch of different scroll sequences with a bunch of different variations to show you some of the cool stuff you can do and how cool some of these videos look when you're able to go forwards and backwards. So here's the scroll sequence complete. These were made the exact same way we did the first one. We got a video. We went to Easy Gift to get still frames from that video. We uploaded them and we did the exact same process for each of these. And these are all individual scroll sequences. These are not scenes within the same scroll sequence. When I start scrolling, we see this color explosion. This one has a title of I Command Attention. And you can see it's pixelating a bit. That's just the quality of the video. Here we have a water balloon exploding. And the water just hanging there, or some of it just hanging there, which is a pretty cool effect. You can go backwards and see exactly what happens in that microsecond where it explodes. And then we have our dancing man again. I changed the headline color and size back to the default. Here's another dancer. I can dance too, he says. Here's a schematic. And all of these, if you scroll back up, you see them scrolling back up. And here is some action footage with a drone, probably, following this biker. And we have a headline here. And then we also have paragraph text. So you can have more than just headlines on here. In fact, you can have anything that you can put into a regular WordPress editor. You can have video files embedded here, you could have images, you could have audio, you have paragraphs. Obviously you don't want to have more than the screen height because then that kind of defeats the purpose of the scroll sequence. So you want to stick within the real estate you have available, but you can add whatever you want. And the faster you scroll, the faster it goes. You can go nice and slow or super quick. Here is a more subtle one. That's not too distracting. You could easily have it as a background for pretty much any website, something really subtle like that. And here we see that we don't even have to have these scroll sequences be full screen. It could be inside of a container. This example is not the best because the, the contents of the earth kind of go outside of the frame, but you could have a scroll sequence that might fit just perfectly inside of a container like this and not have to be full width. So some important things to note. Let's go into the scroll sequence and the scroll sequences, we have these all as separate ones and we can see the gap that I talked about between each of these sequences. Right here, we see this black gap right here. That is the gap of multiple scroll sequences back to back in Elementor. You could get rid of that with negative margin, but you can also get rid of that by having these as just being scenes in the same sequence rather than having all individual sequences. So there's two options to get rid of that. The I'm all action one is the one that had the paragraph text as well. So we have I'm all action. You can have more than just headlines. You can have paragraph of text here as well. If I go to the text tab, we see the paragraph right here with an ID of paragraph five and the heading ID of heading five. And in here, you can add any HTML you want. Like I said, videos, audio, images, you just don't want to take up too much screen space, but you can add anything you want in here. So to get these animated, we did the heading five animation, just like we did the other ones. We just click on add animation, enter heading five, start frame, end frame, and then the types of animations we wanted. For the paragraph, the same thing. Paragraph five, start frame, end frame, types of animations we wanted. 
but we did start the paragraph later. So the heading starts at frame five, paragraph starts at frame 30, which means that they're coming in at different times. If we scroll down to the bike again, we see the action a little while later, the paragraph. So you could have these come in at the same time if you put the same frame number at, for the start. And that's really all there is to that. And scroll sequence is also responsive. So if I switch to a mobile device, let's go right to the top. We see the text width compressing to be contained within the dimensions we can work with. And what you're probably thinking is that works just great. It works just great because I picked the right videos. So I picked videos where the subject of the video is in the center of the video. If you had a video where the subject was on the far right, and that's where the action was, this wouldn't be working out very well because it shows the center of the video frame. So you wanna make sure you pick, see this guy is going off frame at the end because he's too far left in this video to make the mobile version not as great at the very end. Although I think that's acceptable. So you wanna make sure if you wanna optimize for mobile, which I think you do, you wanna make sure that the video you choose has the subject in the center as much as possible. And these ones are stacked where we have the, the not full screen one. And so with scroll sequence, you can easily create web pages like Apple does, where you scroll down the page and things happen without the screen actually moving, but there's stuff going on in the background. And if you, if you go back up, it reverses and it looks super slick. Now you can do that exact same thing with scroll sequence. You're only limited by your creativity for how you want it to work and how you want it to look, but scroll sequence is the technology to make this happen for you. And as far as I know, this is the only plugin in WordPress that allows you to do this really well. After you add all these cool features to your site, you wanna make sure your site goes super fast. Check out this playlist right here, where I help you speed up your WordPress site beyond what you might think is possible. And if you haven't done so yet, click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss new future videos. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. Till next time, keep crushing it, and I will see you in the next video.